This is my 120 year old Beaudry power hammer. This is probably one of the coolest tools in my shop, but it does not work very well at all. So today we're gonna take it apart and try and fix it. So in a previous video, I made the motor tower and mounted that motor up on top with the slack belt so that this thing would work. Now the problem with this hammer is right there down at the dies. So it's not that hard to see where the issue might be down here. Um, this hammer, from what I've been told, was used to make cold chisels at some point in its life. And uh, it has kind of a quick release die mechanism where you can see the top die, there's bolts on this side and the other side of the ram. Uh, and this die actually should be able to come out. And the bottom die has been, well, covered in bird poop. I think they built up the bottom die so that it would just be quicker or maybe they broke the bottom die. I don't know, but I'm gonna see if I can either salvage this or make a whole new one so that this thing has a little bit more stroke to it and can actually work on larger material a little more efficiently. Right now, as you'll see in a second, it really doesn't open up very wide and it's kind of hard to work on anything bigger than like half inch with this, which you kind of don't really need a power hammer to work on something that small. You can just hammer it by hand. So right there is about the maximum that the dies will open, which is about an inch and a half, but there should be much more travel in there. Because of the way this linkage is designed, you can adjust where all of this is, but if there isn't enough room underneath the dies, it doesn't really matter. So you can see the way the, the linkage on this works and there's definitely more room for the ram to throw. So the first thing I think to do is pull the bottom die out, which is in a dovetail with these kind of wedges. We'll pull the bottom die out and kind of see how much movement I can get out of the ram uh, and then see kind of what size the die needs to be. All right, let's see if I can get this die out. Uh... Okay, well that's pretty heavy. Uh, let's see how much the ram moves without that die in the way. So that's all the way at the bottom. Based on photos I've seen of this machine, uh, the bottom die should probably only be about like that tall. I wonder if I could just put a piece of steel in there as like a test, just put like a elevator weight on there and see if I get, if I feel like I'm getting more striking power out of it. Let's try to get, maybe I'll try to get this die out so I can see what it looks like. Well, the threads on this are pretty broken. Okay, so this is essentially a quick change die. I would assume this is hardened, but we can check that. Wow, so there's basically just like a pretty big slot in this and it looks like somebody made like a wear pad right here. Now this machine was previously repaired, but uh, that's pretty interesting. I actually think I'm just gonna put this back in and then the threads on this side are pretty shot but the threads are good on this side, so I think we'll be okay. But I'm just gonna put this back in and then we'll, we'll go up to the ram and see what we can kind of get out of adjusting it. So coming up to the top adjustment here, um, I learned kind of by accident that if you loosen this nut, the whole thing basically is able to move. So essentially there's a post in here 
Um, and there's like a T-nut, T-spacer that blocks this from ever getting pinched. But by tightening this nut, you essentially are tightening the travel on this against this disc here. I don't know the proper terms for half of this stuff, but we're just gonna make it up as we go. So now essentially with that off of there, if I turn this, I'm gonna get travel up or down from the whole ram. So if my goal is to have, whoa, if my goal is to have this travel further down and also in turn lift further up, I think I just want to loosen this and we'll see where we wind up. I don't want to go too far, but we're just going to see how we get this thing to hit and make adjustments from there. So already the die is way further down. Oh, that's funny. Okay, we got to tighten this. I lifted it way up high and then swings down pretty low now. Now the other thing I would wonder is what happens if I adjust where this is on there? Because right now I still don't think it would come down low enough to hit this die that I want. Let's grab a piece of steel and put it down there. So here's like an elevator weight and it's about an inch and a half thick. And you can see, I could probably almost hit it. I wonder if these things would flex enough. Let's turn it on and see what happens. Like almost hits. Pretty cool. So this is one inch, this is one inch thick piece of wood. <laughs> now I'll say in contrast, I couldn't even hit a two by four before. I actually think that's pretty damn good. That might've been it. All right, so here's the bottom die that we got and it's gonna be kind of a pain to remake it because there's a dovetail on the bottom and it's freaking huge. Above the dovetail, this is five and a quarter inches. The piece I just had on the sow block, I guess you would call it, or the anvil, was a little bit bigger than inch and a half. So I would want this to only be maybe two inches off the top. And then I would have my die on top of that, which would bring me back up to probably close to exactly where I was. So the question is, is this a hardened part um, could I make it out of mild steel? I don't know. So I got these hardness files and we're going to see if the top of this is even hard or if it's just mild steel. No, it's, uh, actually, no, it is. So this is, so this is a 40 Rockwell 40 skates right off it. So the question is, uh, if the bottom of this is hard, should I just not bother building this from scratch and literally just try to hot saw through this thing and make this my bottom die and just, it's already been bastardized, right? I'm not gonna save anything. I'm not gonna save myself anything by saving this. This thing has been, this thing's been abused. So the question is, do I just 
I guess I got to figure out how deep that hole goes, which it does go down. I can feel it. Do I just go to that point and basically just hot saw this off and make this my bottom die? I'd have to be right about here, which is about exactly where I am now. And just cut that whole thing off. Ooh, this actually aren't that hard. I just cut this with a bandsaw. So I tried cutting that bottom die with the bandsaw just to see how hard it was. And while I definitely think it had some hardness to it above mild steel, I thought it'd be worth giving a try to cut it with my big bandsaw. Now I called my friend Chris Cash over at Mount Phillip Metalworks for some guidance on this. And he basically agreed with my theory of just cutting down this bottom die and then grinding it back out, making it flat and going from there. There was really no saving this die as it was and cutting it off really wasn't gonna hurt it. So after I cut it in the bandsaw, you can see that the kind of hole was still in there from where the original kind of quick change die might have gone. And instead of cutting it again on the bandsaw, which would have been the right move, I thought I should attack it with an angle grinder and a Victo grain grinding disc, which worked pretty well, but honestly it was just taking a little bit too long and I wanted it to be super flat. So after grinding it most of the way, I went over to the bridge port and I put a nice shell mill on it and started doing some facing. So I'm taking pretty shallow cuts here, but I'm basically just trying to evenly mill down the face of this so it's nice and flat. And I'm referencing basically the bottom of the die on the top of the jaws of the vise. So just taking passes, going back and forth, cutting this. This also took a really long time and uh, it did actually yield me pretty good results. So I was happy with it. Uh, I still had a couple of spots that needed to be ground out, but before I went fully crazy and really dressed in the die, I thought I would put it back in the hammer and see how the height worked out. So I put it back in with those wedges, turned on the hammer, and you can see that I've got a perfect basically setup comparatively to what I had with the elevator weight, and this is exactly what I'm going for. Now, I had a couple of things were loose on the hammer at this point, so it wasn't hitting as hard as it had been earlier, but it did go ahead and smash up that two by four pretty well, which was pretty good. So now with that done, Chris Cash also suggested I mount the hammer to the ground. Uh, to do this, I made some brackets out of some quarter inch angle, and then I drove these really big Tapcon anchors into the floor and then some lag bolts into the side. With that done, I took the die back outside and this time I reground it and got rid of any low spots or flat spots. And I actually went through the grinding kit that I showed in one of my most recent videos, which is on the Combi Click backer pad. So basically I just went up, this is actually the finishing kit. So it's a 120, 220 surface conditioning and then unitizing. And it gave a really nice smooth surface for the die. And then I figured while I was doing this, I might as well redress the top die. So I went over and did a quick kind of 80 grit grind to start. And then I went again, 120, 220 surface conditioning and unitizing. It's a great practical application for those pads. And it left these things looking super nice. So now it was just a matter of putting the dies back in the hammer. So I put the bottom dies just sitting in there and then I bolted the top die in with those two bolts, including the one that's pretty much broken on the side of the die, but I think it's gonna work out okay. And then you can see how nice that bottom die looks. I made sure to take care here to line them up as best I could. And overall, uh, I think that the size of them might not be perfect, but for now, I think they're gonna work really well. Now the bottom die is wider in every direction than the top die, which I think could be problematic for working on kind of longer stock because you want to be able to sort of get underneath it. But I had really good control over the hammer at this point and the dies were basically hitting perfect. Also removing any imperfections that were on the dies is going to keep them out of any material that I hit with them. So having them nice and glass smooth like that, I think is going to be really helpful. So the whole time I've been working on this, I was just plugging the motor directly into the outlet to get it to run. But uh, I wired up a on off switch, a three phase on off switch. I got everything tightened up and honestly, it is running so good. So the problem I was having before was there was obviously very little throw, but because of that, there was very little control because this mechanism really didn't have a lot of room to go. So the way this hammer works is there's basically a threaded pin here 
that locks in this rotating pin on this disc. Um, and there's a brake shoe here that when you push down on the treadle, the brake shoe lifts and then it allows the ram uh, to spin. So I'm gonna power on the machine. I'm not gonna hit anything with it. I'll just have this piece of plywood just so I don't clang the dies. And you can see the kind of control I have. And then we're gonna put a piece of steel under it. So I can go nice and slow, and then if I give it a little more throttle by pushing down on the treadle, it goes much faster. I think it's ready to go. So I fired up my forge. Now, previously I'd been heating some metal with my induction heater, but it really just doesn't heat the metal in a large enough area. So I've got this two burner Mr. Volcano Forge, which is a pretty great intro forge. I'll put a link below. And now we can watch the hammer go. So bolting it down, fixing the travel, dressing the dies. This thing is hitting super hard. Um, I am so happy to have done this work to it and I'm so excited to have this thing running in a real running condition so that I can tr start to use it on projects. Now, I've never really worked under a power hammer before, but I'm learning the control aspects of it. So in this next little clip, you'll see, I can basically just gently tap for sort of finishing blows on pieces. And when I wanna really lay into it and give it some hard hammer hits, I just kinda of gotta push down on that pedal and it'll really go. So overall, the hammer's got tons of control. It's hitting much better. Shout out to Chris Cash at Mount Phillip Metalworks. Go check out his channel. I am gonna be doing some projects with this soon and he's gonna be hopefully coming up to show me how to use it. So stay tuned for that. Follow me right here on Instagram if you enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos in the shop and hopefully some videos using this hammer. Thanks.